Hey everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's Walanda. All right, no long intro. Let's just get right into it. If you guys did not know or are new here, I am a, I guess, OnlyFans creator. Now, this is going to be my two years experience and just like a little bit of tips or my outlook on the platform now. Now, to preface, this is going to be my experience coming from someone who does not do nude or adult content on OnlyFans. So I started my, or I created my OnlyFans account April, 2021. So this month is going to make it exactly two years. I will go a little bit into depth on how I was doing it just a little bit because I will have a crash course or a more um, in-depth video of my experience. I will not be posting it on YouTube. This video is going to be for those who are really, really interested in getting into or starting to create content on OnlyFans. And this is going to be like the psychology behind starting and more about my personal page on there and how I work things on there. That is going to be like a e-video. It's not an e-video because, I mean, it's like an e-video is not the right name for it because um, videos are e. Like, it's like book, ebook. But I did not want to do an ebook because I honestly did not feel like sitting there trying to write and do all the grammar and all of that for an ebook. So I'm just going to do an e video. I'm going to call it that. And it's going to be like a digital download for anyone who is interested in either starting or just want to get more information about the back end of how I do mine. Um, that will be available on my website at wolandaprevalon.com. I will definitely have my link tree um, link down below in the description box and I'll have it pinned as well so you guys can easily access it. So let's get right into the cons. I only have three cons as of right now. Like I said, I've been doing this for two years. I've been doing it for a year and so, but like honestly, I say two years, but like the first year, let me see, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, oh, six months. So the first year and a half, I really did not put much effort into it at all. And I was moving as well, you guys know. Um, if you guys didn't know, I did <laughs> announce I was doing OnlyFans while I was in Dubai here, 2021, um, April. That's that's hilarious because that's the time I knew I wanted to move to Dubai, but also haven't yet. So now that I'm talking about it, now I'm already here. Like it's just, anyways, that's, that's a whole nother thing. But the first year and a half, I had my account. Honestly, I didn't put much effort into it. Uh, like I was saying, I was moving, um, I was traveling a lot and... Um, I don't know. I just, I really didn't have a game plan when it came to me having the account. I just seen the numbers like everybody else. I just seen this as an option, as another stream of income. So I was like, all right, why not? Like when you become an entrepreneur, you realize like you just dibble dab into different things to see what sticks on a wall. Because at the end of the day, I don't care who you are, no matter how well you plan, no matter how much marketing money or um, initial investment money you have for a business, no matter how many people you know, you never know exactly how well a business is going to continue, last, or even like start, to be honest. So this was another opportunity for me to just be like, all right, I don't mind doing this. Let me go ahead and just throw the spaghetti on the wall and see if it sticks or not. I didn't really get into actually putting real effort into my page up until October of 2022. So I've been actively, and even that, like I honestly wanna say the last three months is when I really even stepped it up a notch higher. There's levels to this, okay? All right, so my first con is the fact that it is not an app. If you guys don't know, OnlyFans is only a website. Like, they don't have an app you can download on your phone. You, like, you don't get notifications right on your phone. You don't know when anything is going on unless you are on the website. So that's, 
the um, that's like a main con because it's not as easily accessed. You do have to have that web web page up all the time and your tabs and if you are like me and you got plenty of tabs you literally have to pin that tab like i have to pin it in order for me to um, always go to it and know where it is but yeah all in all i don't know why it's not an app and um, like it's a con because it's not as easily accessible for somebody who's creating especially if you're on their messaging posts a while like if you got stuff going on outside of your phone then you don't know if somebody messaged you or if there's any other notifications that comes up so that's that it's not the biggest deal because you adjust to it it's just a deal because there are a, there aren't a lot of other companies that you just have to be on the actual website you know even our own bank has apps you feel me so that's just that that's just a little something to get used to but at the end of the day you easily get used to it the next con is growth is slow and i said this because if you don't know only fans because one is not like an app where you can just it doesn't have a, a feed page they don't suggest you new creators to follow the only advertisement that is going on on only fans is other people's pages and like OnlyFans TV that they have on their homepage. That's the only other people you see. Other than that, it's, you really have to know the person's handle in order for you to go and actually type it in. And even when you start typing in, you know how other apps, they give you suggestions of everybody that start with this letter, then that letter, then that letter. It's not even like that on OnlyFans. They literally, wait until you type the entire thing out in order for that page to pop up. People cannot accidentally stumble upon your page unless they actually know your page. So with all that being said, it's, you cannot grow yourself. It's just very hard to do, which I feel like is kind of a good thing because it's discreet and a lot of things nowadays are not discreet so i like that extra protection you definitely have to put your own effort into the back end with promoting with advertising in order for your customers to come to you and the last con i have and that's honestly is just for entrepreneurship in general is the name of the game and that is people come and go you know because it's a subscription because it's a membership you don't feel fully know what your next month or next week's payout is going to look like. And that's just how it is for entrepreneurship. Like we don't have every two weeks, unless you're on a retainer with someone, even that after your retainer period is over, you definitely don't know when your next retainer are or your next customer is going to sign their contract. So it's just the name of the game for entrepreneurship. You don't know if you are going to retain your clients or if they're going to go for any type of reason. For my page, I definitely have people come in and out, in and out all the time. And then a lot of the times it be my they're called expired subscribers people who has subscribed before but did not renew so they're considered expired it'll be a lot of expired subscribers renewing like every two months every month like we don't know the finances of the next person so i like i can't be mad at somebody who decides to leave for one month and then come back and then leave for another month like i don't know what they're going through so it's only a kind for those who are so used to a paycheck every week every two weeks a certain date every month other than that because i'm so used to it i've been an entrepreneur this is gonna be i think my fifth year now oh my god fifth year jesus Woo, only you <laughs> but because you know this is gonna be my fifth year now i'm it's something i'm used to okay so let's go right into the pros and it's funny because i have so many pros y'all I'm trying to understand why didn't y'all tell me about OnlyFans before. Like, I was literally in the dark. I didn't know this was going on all of 2020. Um, I didn't know about OnlyFans until I think the beginning of 2021, probably, or late, late 
2020. Like I was saying, like all 2020, I was just traveling. I was in my own zone, y'all. Like I was living life. Like I really was not paying attention to social media or what was going on in somebody else's life. Like I had no clue. Like I was oblivious. <laughs> I was enjoying, enjoying my time. 2020 and all of 2021. So when I did find out about OnlyFans, I literally dove into the logistics of it to see what it is all about. Like I heard so many different things. Of course, a lot of people stigmatize OnlyFans as, oh, there's only adult content on there. And that is not the truth. Like not is that's not the truth. I'm not saying that. That is not the only thing that is on there. There's adult content everywhere. There's adult content on Instagram. There's adult content on YouTube, on every single platform. There's adult content. Apparently, there's like a dark, hypersexual Twitter adult, adult content site, which, I mean, I don't have Twitter, so I didn't know, but I, yeah. Snapchat apparently as well is like what every social media people are going to exploit it because guess what sex sales alcohol sales and that's just the reality of it to be honest so and of course you know the negative is always going to travel like wildfire over the positive of anything any platform any person anything so I know a lot of people just see like only fans that's oh oh my goodness adult content oh whatever i'm like the opposite i'm looking like how can this better fit me like how can i enjoy this platform where i don't feel like i'm exploiting myself i'm not compromising my moral so when i looked into it and i realized it's way more than just what everybody else thinks it is and i was like bet get me on board and i know me well enough to know girl you'll be all right so i do talk more in depth about um like i said the psychology and how my mindset was when it comes to starting up a platform that is so taboo and that's so that is so looked down upon so it, like i said if you are interested go ahead and um, click that link down below to see the e-video. But yeah, like, <laughs> I'm going everywhere, y'all. This is probably gonna be a long video. As of, as of right now, as of right now, who knows what later on in the future, my my feelings about it could be totally different, could totally change, and you know, it is what it is. But as of right now, I am absolutely enjoying myself on OnlyFans. I really enjoy it to the point where, y'all, Instagram who? Who? <laughs> YouTube who? That's how I'm feeling right now. Even though I'm still going, you know, bless y'all <laughs> with some content on those. But so yes, now that you know my feelings towards OnlyFans, let's get into the pros. Y'all, I don't have to worry about music strikes or inappropriate content being flagged. Y'all know how quotes, air quotes, major air quotes, YouTube and Instagram is when it comes to inappropriate content. Even though a lot of suspicious contents get passed through the cracks on these platforms, I don't gotta worry about none of that in OnlyFans because guess what? The rules are very, very minimal on there. On YouTube, I have to worry about Oh, which music I can put in the background or if I'm vlogging and there's a licensed music playing on the background like all of that is it makes it very hard for you to actually enjoy creating the content because if you're trying to monetize off of this platform to make a living to eat and to definitely give your audience more content that they enjoy but you're thinking of all these strikes and you're having fear that your page is going to be flagged because of the simplest things and you're not making any money off of it like that hurts that hurts so the fact that i don't have to worry about any of that in only fans i am happy because i'm a music person like well i don't like making music i just love listening to music and i want to dance to i want to listen i want to have music playing in the background that i enjoy all my haitian music all my afro beats like i want all of those be playing around me while i'm creating content but 
I can't a lot of the times. You got to mute because Instagram won't allow it or you can't monetize off of it. It's just like, it's annoying. So I love the fact that I don't have to worry about that in OnlyFans. Next, it's funny because IG always did the bare minimal. And once they started to have a competition, aka TikTok, that's when they want to step up their game. Don't wait until a competitor comes in order for you to provide your um, your audience, your customers value. There have been times we are asking for the simplest things from Instagram or from Meta, and they continuously do their own thing. And then when people start going on to other platforms, now y'all want to put out more stuff, more features on the app. And I said this to say, scheduling content in OnlyFans is a really, really good. Like being that they have something called the queue where you can batch all of your um, content and then schedule them for upload, just like YouTube. But Instagram didn't have that. They just started having... Um, that scheduling fee, which I tried earlier this month, they just started rolling that out. It was like, um, this is 2023. Y'all just now getting scheduled. We had to go through third parties to try to, and pay third parties to try to schedule content for people who are busy and who has a lot of content to upload at once. So I like the fact that on OnlyFans, you are able to schedule your content. Like right now, I am a month and a half out when it comes to my content so I don't have to worry about it like over time I just add new content to the end of the months you understand so it really helped relieve a lot of stress a lot of um, pressure on the creator so I already have all of the content scheduled and ready to go like for example I can't have all of these content just sitting on my phones I have too many different platforms and too many large files in my phone in order for it to be just sitting there waiting for the day to come for me to manually upload it. Like, no. So I appreciate the fact that OnlyFans allows their content creators to schedule out posts. It just makes everything so much easier. Next pro is not having to worry about engagement, engagement, engagement. You guys know when it comes to brand deals, when it comes to like the big checks, engagement is key. Like brands are gonna come on your platforms no matter what it is, where it is, to see if you can reel in the numbers or if you are reeling in proper numbers. And being the fact that I don't know what's going on with Instagram algorithm and YouTube algorithms. Like you guys are not seeing my uploads on YouTube. I know picture posts does better than reels. I don't even try with reels anymore on Instagram because it's like a hit or miss. Even with, like, with a lot of stuff, it's just a hit or miss. You spend all of this time, all of this energy, all of this um, finance behind creating content only for them not to be seen by even your own audience. It's like, all right, I understand you're not pushing it to new viewers, but like, well, damn, can my viewers see what I post? You understand? So with OnlyFans, I don't got to worry about that because the people that are in my page or that are subscribed to me, they are always going to be able to see my posts. Like there's no weird algorithms I have to worry about. I don't have to worry about, oh, hiding likes because that post didn't do so well because Instagram didn't push it and I don't know what a brand is gonna think. I don't gotta worry about any of that. I already know once I post it on my page, on my feed and OnlyFans, Everybody who is subscribed to me will see it no matter what. Like, they cannot see it because it's a paid content. They're paying for the membership. So that is a stress I don't have to worry about, which I am truly, truly grateful for because this that's one of the reasons I stepped away from Instagram. Like, now I post, what, once twice maybe a month on Instagram. It's like, what's the point when you don't know if the thing you post is going to be a success or not, you know? So that's that's a that's a big pro for me. The fact that I don't have to worry about algorithms, I don't have to worry about statistics, I don't have to worry about yeah, none of that. None of that's on OnlyFans. The only statistics I have to worry about is how many subscribers I have on there. And even that I don't gotta worry about if I'm doing good in the DMs. I am able to post 
anything without seeming weird and y'all already know how that can be you post one crazy looking thing on instagram or on youtube and like oh why this girl why this girl what well guess what only fans it is a lot so if you come into my page to see my weird stuff that's a win-win like i got paid for you to come and just think I'm weird. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Even though I don't post anything weird, but, you know, there are some things that probably some people are like, oh, I would never, or oh, I couldn't. Like, for example, like, I do feet content in there as well. So some people feel weird will posting their feet on their pages, which is understandable. Like, I've had feet followers for years that I've ignored on my Instagram for years. And if I knew OnlyFans back then, then I most definitely would have taken full advantage of that and opened it up sooner for them. But yeah, it will be weird if I just post a random feet pic on my Instagram. Like, it just seems weird. But being that I have my own lock wall, I don't have to worry about, oh, this is weird. This is weird. This is weird. No, because the people that are in there, they're in there because they want to see what I'm posting. But yeah, I, I don't feel weird anymore posting anything in there compared to how I would feel if I was posting it on a more public platform. Less negative Nates and Nancys. Yes, 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 yes. The thing about having content locked behind a paywall is people don't go in there just to talk crap about you, like to you. You understand? Like there has to be something wrong with you if you pay to go talk crap about somebody in their paid page. Like it just doesn't make any sense at all. So being that said, there are not a lot of negative people in there. Yeah, there'll be people that thought they would get something and come in and it's not what they expect. Back. And, you know, they say they're a little too spent and they hop on out. At that point, I don't care. It is what it is. I didn't promise you anything prior and I wasn't enticing you to think one thing or the other. Because with me, I am a straightforward with my content. Like, I don't need anybody to come in harass me because I portrayed an image that they thought they were going to get. Like, no, I'm very straightforward. I tell you exactly what is going to be in there so you are not disappointed so you don't come and mess up my vibe like no don't do that <laughs> don't do that actually building your own community these people love you enough to pay monthly to see you yes like they really enjoy the content that you are producing or they just enjoy looking at you whatever the situation is so i feel like that's more of a sense of community than having a free page on another platform where all randoms come in and a lot of people just like to watch you just like just they just want to be spectators they just like to watch you and hate on you and talk about you so having that paid wall definitely uh, weave out the observers only and the the people who really don't add value to your community add value to your page it's funny because a lot of people think having a lot of followers means you're making a lot of money having a lot of followers mean you actually have a true community and i don't believe that at all like i've been doing this for 10 years now but full time for five years and I've definitely realized like everybody th there is not really for you. You feel me? So I might as well get paid if you're there with, for me or not. You still pay to watch me. You understand? So having a more smaller, a more tight knit community is way better than having millions and hundreds and thousands of followers. And yet they're just talking bad about you or just they just looking at you just to hate on you, you feel me? Haters don't pay for memberships. Like real customers, real loyal fans, real loyal subscribers, members pay for memberships. Like I said, like this entire time I've been on there properly, like I wanna say since October, 2022 is my proper. It has been very chill. I don't feel any stress, any pressure when it comes to having it um yeah it's just more chill it's more relaxed i don't have to worry about 
um, editing. I don't have to worry about, like, they don't even care if I'm wearing makeup. Like, they just want to see me. Of course, a lot of people think, oh, okay, well, you're about to do OnlyFans. That means you're about to bust it wide open. You're about to show it all. Um, according to who? I feel like you definitely have to brand yourself in a certain way in order for you to get that respect. Because when you start branding yourself in another way or very cheap or very low class, then that's you going to get low class audience, low class people, low class attitudes. And that's not what you want. So, um, yeah, my experience, people are very, very respectful in my page. And if they don't, oh, cut them off real quick, real quick. <laughs> it's, I feel like it's easier for somebody else to try to go make a fake page of um, like Instagram or YouTube in order to come back and still harass you compared to try to make another fake page of OnlyFans because you have to go through uh, identif identification processes in order for you to even like get your page. So yeah, it, yeah, there's no comparison. Oh, let me see. I have two more left. Um, let me say the last one first. Less time consuming to produce. And I mentioned that a little bit when it comes to editing and doing all of that. I could definitely just prop up my phone and um, do some minutes, seconds of content and just post it like that without having to go and chop and screw it and add this, add that. If I want to do extra stuff, I can. But guess what? They don't care. All the fancy, all the, they don't care. They, they don't care. And I love the fact that they don't care because I still produce really, really good content, really good quality stuff. In a fraction of the time, I would do a one YouTube videos and my OnlyFan views are higher than my YouTube views. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, come on. And the last one, which is a big, big, big one for me, and this is because I've had businesses where over cost is so overhead cost is super, super high. I've owned an online boutique before where I had to pay for the merchandise. I had to pay for um, any problems that happens when it comes to shipping to the customer. And if they don't get it, shipping bag, insurance on packages. I've had to pay for an office space in order to house the merchandise. I've had to pay for labels, for stickers, for this, for that, for boxes, for shipping boxes. It's like there's so much overhead when it comes to other businesses where you have to sell a physical product to where the only overhead cost I have with OnlyFans is besides like my usual like internet, all of that, that's for any business nowadays anyways. If, if I want to buy something real cute and sexy to put on for them, that's it. My trial hauls, y'all know I move my trial hauls into OnlyFans and I don't do it anymore on YouTube, but I don't have to go buy bajillion, trillions of stuff in order for me to create content for them. You understand? They are very chill, very relaxed. They just literally want to look at me. Like, like honestly, y'all, I've been DM'd on OnlyFans for me to create content of me just doing things I would normally do every day in life, like clean my house, clean my plants, eat, like simple things that I am already doing. I don't have to go and purchase, oh, $1,000 worth of Shein stuff or $800 worth of this and the most of this and the most like outrageous thing to outbeat somebody else. I don't have to do that. So my overhead costs, it's literally non-existent. I think I went more in depth than I really wanted to because I was going to tell you guys some tips, but I already talked a long time on here. So I'll leave the tips for my crash course, e-video, whatever you want to call it. So I'll put those tips in there. Other than that, that is my overall two-year experience as a content creator on OnlyFans. One thing I could leave you guys with, is it going to be hard? Yes, because it's a business. Like, starting off any business is not easy. Like, 
it's just not, that's just the reality of it. It's not going to happen overnight. It's just not, it's not the reality of it. So you just got to know you really want to do it and just put the work behind it. With that being said, I thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram at important underscore chocolates at Willanda everywhere else. If you are interested in subscribing to my OnlyFans, I will leave that link in the link tree down below.